Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so today we will be looking at uh, forward and inverse kinematics uh, of uh, serial arms and uh, before going to that we will very briefly uh, revise what we did in the last class that is uh, DH parameters and how to assign frames. So uh, let us look at uh, very quickly at uh, DH parameters and how we had defined our DH parameters uh, for a manipulator arm. So, DH parameters are basically a way of assigning axis and frames to uh, two links which could be of uh, any shape. So, if you look at very quickly revising, if we have two links which are of any shape in 3D space, then uh, how do we assign axis to this uh, two frames? So, essentially what I am drawing is uh, two links which are having any shape in three dimensional space. Now, DH parameter essentially how we assign it is the Z axis is the axis of rotation or uh, translation. So, in this particular case we can see that our z axis is like this and uh, for the next link the z axis is like that. Okay. So, uh, so, the first thing that we do is to assign our z axis as the axis of rotation or uh, uh, translation. So, that is my z. The x axis is along the link, along link and if these uh, if the z's are intersecting are intersecting Uh, then the x axis x axis is perpendicular to plane of z's uh, plane of the z's so essentially we have to assign our z axis and the x axis so uh, let us assign our z axis so we let us say this is our z uh, i minus 1 and the next one is our z uh, i so this is the direction of z next i assign my uh, origin here and the next origin i assign here and say this is my x i x i minus 1 so this is my uh, x i axis. So, this is x i uh, minus 1 and this is my next x i which is x i. Okay. So, now uh, the, the question here is what how do I find the relation between this frame z i and the, uh, the frame z i minus 1. So, which basically means that if I were to rotate and translate the frame z i minus 1, how many rotations and translations are required uh, such that I can align the axis z i minus 1 with that of, the, uh, of uh, z i. So, that is the question we are trying to answer here and how do we proceed? So, we proceed this way that first let us uh, look at the z axis. So, this z axis z i and z i minus 1 are not parallel nor are they intersecting. So, what we do is we draw a line which is parallel to, so I see the direction of the z i axis and draw a line which is parallel to that. So, my line will come something like this. Now, this and this are parallel lines. So, the first uh, transformation that we do is a rotation transformation which moves uh, which rotates z i uh, minus 1 by an angle alpha and aligns it with uh, the z i axis. So, the first transformation is an alpha. The next transformation we do is uh, we take the origin of uh, uh, the z i minus z i minus 1 axis and translate it till here. Okay. So, this is a translation and we translate it by a distance of a i. Next, so what we find here now is that my z i minus 1 is here. Uh, z i minus 1 axis is aligned. So, the two uh, z i minus 1 and the z i axis are aligned now this is my z i uh, minus 1 axis. The x i minus 1 axis is like this. So, x i minus 1 is like this now. Okay. So, what were the two transformations? One was uh, alpha, the other one was a. Now, uh, then uh, we find that the, the axis are not aligned. So, what I do next is I see my x i minus 1 is here and x i uh, x i minus 1 is here. So, what I do is I move I rotate this by an angle theta and I align such that now the x i minus 1 comes here comes here and now uh, this x i and the x i minus 1 are parallel to each other. So, now these two lines are parallel. Okay. So, the z axis are aligned and the x i axis are parallel to each other. Now, we see that the origins are still uh, different. So, what I do is I move the origin upward by a distance d or d i and uh, now the uh, origins get aligned. So, once I uh, move the origin from here to here by distance d i now my 
axis zi minus 1 comes here xi are this is my z axis zi minus 1 sorry this is my xi this is xi minus 1 and this is my zi minus 1. So, now we see that the two frames zi minus 1 and the zi frame are aligned the origins are the same and they are aligned. So, how many transformations were involved one was rotation by alpha one was a translation by a again a rotation by uh, by theta and then a translation by d and uh, these are four parameters which are called the uh, dh parameters. So, we have uh, uh, alpha is the uh, so the first parameter is a. So, a is what we call the link length or it is the distance between z i minus uh, z i to z i uh, z i plus 1 z i to z i plus 1 ok. It is measured along uh, x i ok. So, this is also called the link length. The next parameter is uh, uh, alpha, alpha is uh, the angle between between the two uh, z axis z i and uh, z i uh, my uh, z i plus 1 axis ok. So, this is my and it is measured along uh, x i axis. So, this is the angle alpha the the third transformation is uh, d which is the distance uh, between the uh, between the x axis ok it is distance between x axis x i minus 1 and x i and it is measured along uh, the uh, the z i uh, sorry this is x i minus 1 uh, it is measured along z i axis right. Now, uh, so this is my offset distance d a alpha d and theta, theta is the angle between the uh, the two axis x i minus 1 and x i and it is measured along the z i axis. So, essentially these are four parameters which are called d para, uh, the d h parameters. So, this a is called the link length, then uh, alpha is called the link twist, uh, d is called the offset distance between the two origins and theta is the link angle. So, in a revolute joint system this uh, these three are going to be constants the only variable is going to be an angle alpha. So, for a revolute system the variable is the joint angle. So, let us write it down for a revolute uh, system then the joint angle variable the variable is only theta. Now, for a prismatic system or a translating a system the joint variable is d. So, this is something to note that depending on it is a prismatic joint or a revolute joint the joint angle is going to be alpha or is going to be theta or it is going to be d. Now, uh, we have four transformations a alpha d and theta and each one of them have homogeneous transformation matrix associated with them. So, if I combine all the four your know, alpha a d and theta if I combine this four matrices ok alpha a d and theta each of this will have uh, homogeneous matrices uh, for each case. Now, if I multiply all of them out then I will get a generalized matrix and the generalized matrix looks uh, something like this. So, the generalized matrix to go from any frame so i minus from the ith frame to the i minus 1 frame uh, is written this way. So, this is cos theta uh, cos theta minus sin theta uh, 0 a i and then we have uh, sin theta cos alpha then we have cos theta cos alpha minus sin alpha minus sin alpha d here and uh, then we have the third row which is sin theta sin alpha cos theta sin alpha and uh, cos alpha here is cos alpha and uh, d here and the last row is always 0 0 0 and 1. So, this is a generalized matrix which can take us from any frame to the previous frame. So, if I want to go from uh, 1 to 0 so, I am going to I am simply going to take the values of the homogeneous transformation uh, sorry the link parameters put them in this value in this matrix and I will get the transformation matrix. So, let us look at a very simple example. So, in the very simple example that we are going to look at is uh, the manipulator arm which is shown here. So, this uh, manipulator arm has uh, 3 degrees of freedom. So, this has uh, 3 degrees of uh, 
degrees of freedom. So, one revolute joint here, second joint here and the third joint is there and they are connected by links. So, we assign our dh parameters, uh, we first assign our axis, z axis is like this, x axis x 0 is here, x 1 is here, x 2 is here and x 3 is there and uh, then we write our dh parameter table. After writing the dh parameter table, what we do is we, uh, we take from the dh parameter table, we find the relationship between the axis here to the axis here. So, axis third to axis 2, then axis 2 to axis uh, 1 and then axis 1 to axis 0. So, if you multiply all of them out, what we will get is the relationship of the third axis from here to the first axis there and that is what we are doing. So, let us uh, very quickly write down the transformation, uh, the dh parameter table for this uh, manipulator. So, we have our manipulator having 3 degrees of freedom as shown there. So, we assign our axis and uh, let us assign our axis, the first axis is our z axis. So, my z 0 and z 1 are the same axis, z 0 does not move, uh, x, z 2 is axis here and z 3 is here. So, if you can imagine this is a planar system which is going to move on the plane, so similar to the one that is shown here. Next is my x axis, so this is my x 0, this is x 1, this is x 2 and this is my x 3 and in terms of link lengths, the distance between the z axis, this is l 1 and that is l 2. So, if I write my dh parameter table uh, very quickly, we have three or four parameters a, alpha, d and theta and our dh parameter table will basically come out to be 0, 0, 0, uh, theta 1, okay. the next is uh, L 1, 0, 0, theta 2 and L 2, 0, 0, theta 3. So, this is our dh parameter table and this is for joint number 1, 2 and 3. So, this is very quickly revising what we did in the last class of how to write this table. Now, uh, taking one row of this table, so this is a row, right? So, this is a matrix and these are arrays. So, this is the relationship between joint number 0 and joint number 1 or 1 uh, to 0, this is 2 to 1 and this is 3 to 2, okay? So, I want to find the transformation matrix which will uh, relate joint uh, the axis 0, uh, sorry axis 1 to the axis 0. So, what I do is I take the first row of a d alpha d theta and uh, put it in this matrix. Okay. So, I take the first row and I put it in this matrix and what I will get is uh, t uh, 0 to uh, 1 to 0, sorry, it will be 1 to 0. So, if I do that, uh, I take the first 0, 0, 0 theta 1 and I put it into this matrix, then what I will get is uh, the relationship which is written like this. So, I am going to get this relationship 0, 0, 0, 1, here it is going to be 0, 0, 0, this is cos, cos 1 uh, minus sin 1, 0, 0, 1, this is sin 1 cos 1 and this is 0, 0. So, in short I am writing cos theta 1 as a C 1 and similarly sin theta 1, sin theta 1 as S 1. So, that is uh, just to write it in the short. The second uh, matrix that I am going to get is I take the second row from here, so it is L 1 0 0 theta 2. So, if I take that and put it in this generalized matrix, then I am going to get the relation between the second frame and the first frame, which is going to come out to be uh, 0 0 0, this is 1. So, it is L 1 and uh, we have uh, uh, cos 2 minus sin 2 0 0 1. So, this is sin 2 cos 2 and this is 0 0 1 right? and here it is 0 0. So, uh, this is the relationship between the second frame and the first frame and if I take the relationship between the, uh, between the third, frame, uh, sec third frame and the second frame, then it is going to come out in similarly as, how do I get it? I take the third row that is L 2 0 0 theta 3 and I put it into this generalized matrix and I get my uh, relationship matrix, the homogeneous transformation matrix like this. So, this is uh, cos 3 minus sin 3 0 0 1 this is uh, sin 3 cos 3 0 0 1. Okay. Now, if I want to get the transformation between from the uh, end effector or the third frame to the 0 frame, what I need to do is I need to multiply. So, T 3 to 0 will be equal to T 0 to 1 into 1 to 2 into T 2 to 3. Okay. So, if I multiply these three matrices now, you can multiply them out and uh, this into that into this. So, what we are going to get essentially is going to be this matrix. Okay. So, uh, please remember that the last uh, row is always 0, 0, 0, 1. 
So, what we are going to get is uh, a matrix which looks like this. So, what I am doing here is I am going to multiply uh, this into that. Okay, if you can see, I am going to get cos. Uh, so, you know how to multiply matrices cos uh, this row into this uh, column, right. So, it is C1, uh, C2 minus S1, S2. And uh, so, what is going to come out here? And then I am going to multiply it with this one. Okay, so, this into that into that. So, if you multiply it out, what you will get is cos theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 minus sin theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. This will remain as 0, 0, 1 sin theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 and cos theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. This will remain as 0, 0, 0. So, again I am writing in short cos 1, 2, 3 means cos theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. Okay. Similarly, sin 1, 2, 3 means uh, sin theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. Uh, what about this part? This part would mean L 1 cos 1 plus L 2 cos 1, 2 and then we have uh, L 1 sin 1 plus L 2 sin 1, 2 and this is 0. So, you can multiply it out these 3 matrices uh, and uh, what we will get is the total transformation matrix from the third frame to the second frame. Now, uh, when I talked about the homogeneous transformation matrix, we said that this matrix has a structure and the structure is that this part is the rotation, the total rotation and uh, this part is the translation or the distance between origins. Okay. So, now if you want to find out if uh, whatever we have got is correct or not, then if you go back to this figure uh, and let us refer back to this figure and see whether it is correct or not. So, let us go back here and see whether it is correct or not. So, this is the rotation matrix. Uh, so, this this part is the rotation matrix. Now, the rotation matrix is telling us that if this is my theta 1, this is theta 2 and that is theta 3, then uh, this axis x axis 3 has been rotated by angle theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. So, if you can imagine if I if I draw this fellow down here, if I just draw it down here, if I draw this parallel to, to this here, then uh, this has been rotated first if it was here then first it has been rotated by theta 1 then by theta 2 then by theta 3 and then it has gone there. So, the angle here is theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 okay. and that is something that we are getting here. It is a rotation about the z axis. So, the rotation matrix is giving us that it is rotated by an angle of course, theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 which is, uh, which is correct. So, this part of the matrix is correct. Now, what about the uh, the distance between the origins? The origin of the 0 frame is here and the origin of the third frame is there. right? So, what is the distance between them? So, if I were to plot, if I extend my x axis here, then I find that uh, I can take a projection like this. So, what is the x coordinate and the y coordinate of this point here? So, what is the x y of that point? So, essentially is the projection on the x axis which is the sum of this distance plus that distance. Right. So, this distance is equal to L 1 cos theta 1 which is written here and this distance which is equal to this distance. So, this distance is equal to this distance which is equal to this is theta 1. So, it is equal to L 2 cos theta 1 plus theta 2 which is there. So, this is correct. So, the distance by which the origin has moved this origin has moved is uh, this plus that. So, uh, the distance by which the origins uh, the third origin has moved with respect to the 0 is in the x direction it has moved by this much and this much and in the y direction it has moved by this much and this much. So, how much is this? This is equal to L 1 uh, sin theta 1 and this is equal to L 2 sin theta 1 plus theta 2 which is uh, given here. So, we find that uh, just by looking at the manipulator structure we can very easily write, uh, write down what is the final transformation matrix. Okay. Now, uh, we have found the relationship between the last frame and the first frame. So, now what we need to do is uh, we, we need to look at forward kinematics and inverse kinematics. Now, what is forward kinematics and inverse kinematics? So, forward kinematics is essentially if I give you the joint angles. So, if I give you thetas, can, can we find out what is x y there? And inverse kinematics is if I give you x y, then can you find out what is the joint angle? So, it is written this way. Uh, if the input is, if, so forward kinematics is written this way. So, if my input is the thetas, okay, then the output is the x y, the end effector x y and z if there is a z. Okay. And uh, if my input is x y and z, then inverse kinematics tells me 
what is the corresponding theta 0. Okay. So, this will also mean the position and the orientation plus orientation. of uh, the end effector. So, this is forward kinematics and this is uh, inverse kinematics. Now, let us look at, uh, uh, let us go back here and see. So, this is giving me the x coordinate okay, of the end effector and this is giving me the y coordinate of the end effector, right. So, this is my x coordinate, that is my y, uh, y coordinate. Let me write this down again only in terms of x and y. So, x is equal to uh, L1 uh, cos theta 1 plus L2 cos theta 1 plus theta 2. And what is y? y is equal to, so let us let me call this equation 1 and uh, the second one is y is equal to L 1 sin theta 1 plus L 2 sin theta 1 plus theta 2. So, this is my equation 2. Okay. Now, in forward kinematics uh, that is shown here, it will basically mean if I give the thetas input here, I will know what is the x and y's and in inverse kinematics is Essentially, if I give the input here as x and y, then I have to find out what is uh, the various joint angles uh, thetas, right. So, let me, uh, so what we need to do here is I need to solve for inverse kinematics, uh, forward kinematics is very direct. So, forward, so for the forward kinematics, which is uh, in forward kinematics, for example, if we say uh, theta 1 in this tooling case is 30 degrees and theta 2 is equal to 60 degrees, okay. So, it should be able to tell me, it should be able to uh, give the end effector should go to x y. So, what is the coordinate there? Okay. So, if I put it simply in this equation, you will find that we can uh, get the coordinates, right. Now, in the inverse uh, for inverse kinematics, if I say that x and y, uh, x and y are given by x is for example, 100 and y is equal to 373 for example then it should tell me what is theta 1 and theta 2. Okay. So, we can try it out and see if you take, uh, so the two governing equations are equation 1 and equation 2. So, what I will do in this uh, model is first I am going to give uh, the angles for theta 1 30 and 60. So, what you will see is the end effector will go to the point 0 and 373. So, uh, let us look at the forward kinematics and the inverse kinematic solution here to understand better. So, here uh, it is at 30 degrees and 60 degrees. So, let me bring it down to 0 and 0. So, I am going to start from 0 and 0. So, this is coming down to 0 and 0. So, this is my x axis, this is my y axis. So, if you can uh, visualize this, this is my uh, y axis here and this is my x axis. Now, uh, I am talking about the point, uh, this point. Okay. So, when both the angles theta 1 and theta 2 are 0, then this is exactly here the link lengths are uh, 200 millimeters and this is 200 millimeters. So, it is going to be the coordinate of this point will be for will be uh, 400 and in the y direction it will be 0, right. So, in the forward direction uh, forward kinematics let us uh, give the input as joint angles 30 okay, and uh, joint angle 60. Okay. So, what it will do is I am giving the input as 30 and 60. So, let us see where does it go. So, essentially it is going to use those two equations and go forward and come to this point. So, this point if you can see is uh, somewhere around 100 and uh, 373. Okay. So, I said that this is uh, 400 and the total length here is 400, this is 200, 200. So, essentially when I am giving the input to the uh, forward kinematics program which is which are those two equations, it is simply putting the theta in those two equations and then computing what is the end effector position here. So, you can see that if I say this is uh, a 30 and this is 60, the end effector will go to 0 and uh, 0 and uh, 373. So, that is my forward kinematics. Now, in the inverse kinematics is if I want to go to this position, then what is the corresponding angles that I need and that is more important from control point of view, right. Because the controller needs to know that if it is here, it wants to go to some other point, what is the corresponding angle at this point and at this point, then it can move and bring it to this point. So, in inverse kinematics, the input to the system is the coordinates of the end effector. In this case, it is 100 and uh, 300. Let us put it here and see. So, let me bring it back to uh, 0 and 0 again. So, I am bringing it back to 0 and 0 again. Okay. So, now it is 0, 0 again. Now, I need to take, uh, I need to reach a point which is having a coordinate of 
having a coordinate of uh, 0, uh, 100 and uh, 373. So, it will do the inverse kinematics and find out what is the angle and take it to that angle. So, let us say it is 0 there and 60. So, we can see that it will come back to that position again. Okay. So, in inverse kinematics we give the input as the end effector position orientation, it computes the angles and takes it there. In forward kinematics we give the angles and it takes uh, drives the angles and takes it there. Okay. So, uh, this is the example that I just showed there. In forward kinematics I gave the input theta 1 equal to 30 and theta 2 equal to 60 into this two equations, uh, the equation 1 and equation 2 and uh, the, the program essentially simply put the values in sin theta cos theta computed and then drove it there. In inverse kinematics, I gave the coordinate of the point as x and y equal to x is 100 and y is 373 and uh, it, did, it did the computation and found this out and said it is 30 and this one is 60, that is inverse kinematics. Now, in inverse kinematics is more important from control point of view because the controller must know what is the corresponding values of the angles at a particular location. Say for example, if I am going to move this manipulator from here uh, to here. So, essentially it will move from here uh, to here like this. So, what the controller needs to know is at this location, let us call it x y, uh, at the location x y, what are the corresponding theta. So, we have theta 1 and we have theta 2. Okay. So, this is my theta 1 and that is my theta 2. Now, in this location, if we call it x dashed and y, y dashed, so this is my x dashed and y dashed. Okay. In that case, the inverse kinematics program will tell x dash and y dash corresponds to theta 1 dash and theta 2 dash. right? So, this the inverse kinematics will do and find out. Now, what the controller will do, it will do this minus this. Okay? So, it will do theta 2, how the controller works essentially is, it is for angle theta 1, it will do theta 1 dashed minus theta 1 and generate an error which it calls E. So, let us call it E theta 1. Okay. And for the second one, uh, what the controller will do is, it will take the second one theta 2 dash minus theta 2 and generate another error which is called E of theta 2. Okay. Then what the controller will do is uh, either PD or PID, we will see later, what it will essentially do is it will try and make this error equal to 0, which means that if the manipulator is here and it knows that there is an error, this much error is there. So, it will drive the link in this direction until this error becomes 0. So, the moment the error has become 0, it means it has reached. So, that is how the controller essentially works. So, from control point of view, inverse kinematics is uh, more important than the uh, is more important than the forward kinematics. Now, what is the standard procedure for inverse kinematics? So, the standard procedure for inverse kinematics is uh, for given uh, any manipulator system. Basically, we need to write down the uh, the first thing we need to do is to write down the DH parameter table. So, the first thing we need to do is write DH parameter table. Okay. Then we need to make the transformation matrix from the end effector to the base then equate it to the desired end. So, first thing that we need to do here is make dh table, then based on the dh table we need to make our transformation matrix from the 0 frame to the end frame, which will mean um, get all the matrices and multiply them out 0 to 1 multiplied by 2 to 1 to 2 like that up to t n minus 1 to n. Okay. And then uh, we have our final matrix which is number 3 is T0 to N and then to equate this with the desired position orientation. So, desired position and the desired orientation, desired position and desired orientation. Okay. So, the desired position and orientation is also a homogeneous transformation matrix which will look like this. So, this is going to be 0, 0, 0 that is 1 this is my distance between the origins. So, this is my position and this is my orientation. Right. So, now uh, in inverse kinematics, what is desired is the desired position and orientation of the end effector. For example, what does that mean? In this case, for example, if I say that my orientation should have an angle of theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3, that is my orientation. Right. And the position of the end effector here, this point is it should have some x y coordinate x in this direction and y in this direction. Okay. And that is written in the form of this uh, homogeneous matrix, uh, which, which is uh, this matrix here. Now, how do we proceed to solve? We have a 4 by 4 matrix here and we have a 4 by 4 matrix here. So, what we do is essentially we take this matrix and equate it uh, to, to, the, to this matrix, which is uh, the 0 to n matrix for this manipulator. 
So, let us look at the case for uh, this manipulator, what the inverse kinematics look like. So, this uh, manipulator I am drawing it again is uh, something like this okay? and this is my x axis, that is my y axis and uh, this is uh, z 0, z 1 just the way we had done z 2, z 3, this is my x 1, x 2 and x 3 and uh, the final matrix that comes out from T 0 to 3 comes out uh, to be equal to, uh, so it is cos 1, 2, 3, it is minus sin 1, 2, 3 and it is 0, 0, 1 okay? and here it is sin 1, 2, 3, it is cos 1, 2, 3 and 0, 0 and here it is 0, 0, 0 and here it is L 1 cos 1 plus L 2 cos 1, 2 and it is L 1 sin 1 plus L 2 sin 1, 2 this is 0 that is 1. Okay. So, this is the same matrix that uh, we have got uh, here. Okay. Now, uh, what is the desired position orientation? So, this is my 0 to 3 matrix here. Now, what I need is the desired position and orientation. So, this is what is desired, okay, the desired matrix okay, which consists of the orientation and the position. So, just for example, let me uh, say that the desired T desired is equal to a matrix which has uh, some numbers. This will have some numbers. Let's call it. Uh, uh, let's call it uh, 0 0.86. Oh, sorry. Let's not put a number. Let's put uh, R11, R12, R13, R21, R22, R23, R31, R32, and R33. So this is 0, 0, 0, and this is uh, uh, this is one. Now, in this case, let me put x, y and z. Okay? So, what is the meaning of this? The meaning of this essentially is that this is my desired position of the end of, uh, uh, desired orientation of the end effector, this is the orientation and this is the desired position of the, uh, of the origin of the frame, of the last frame. Okay? Now, we need to equate this. So, I am going to equate T03 to T desired. Okay? So, we are equating both of this. Now, this is a 4 by 4 matrix and this is a 4 by 4 matrix which we are equating. Now, what is the unknown here? The unknown is cos theta 1 and cos theta 2 L 1 L 2 are known. Now, if you look at this, there are, it's a, this matrix is a 4 by 4 matrix and this is also a 4 by 4 matrix. So, it would appear that uh, there are 16 equations. For example, if I equate this to this, I equate uh, the second one to this one, third one to this one and the fourth here. So, in that way, it would appear that there are 16 equations. Okay. But if you look at some of the equations, for example, if you look at this 0 is equal to 0, this equation 0 equal to 0 does not mean anything. So, you will not be able to solve anything from here. So, if you look very closely, there are a lot of zeros and 1s here, uh, which means that although there are 16 equations, because there are 16 elements, uh, we are not able to solve uh, simply by, uh, we are not able to solve randomly. So, the procedure for trying to solve is, if you try and equate this to this first. Okay. It will be very, very difficult. So, for example, just to explain that this is cos theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 is equal to R 1 1. Okay. Now, R 1 1 will be a number say just for example, if I say 0.86 just for example. Now, you have three variables here and you have one equation only and that is also in this form. So, it is extremely difficult. It will not be possible to solve. It is not extremely difficult. It is not possible to solve this. Okay. So, uh, what is done is instead of trying to solve from the orientation part, we try and uh, solve from the, uh, we try and solve from uh, the x, y and the z from this side. Okay? So, I am going to equate this to this, I okay? will equate this one to this one and I will equate this one to this one. So, that is normally what is tried. Okay? So, now if I equate them, then you find if I equate this to x and if I equate that to y and I equate this to z, then I have two equations and uh, two unknowns. So, what are the two equations? The first equation is this, this is equal to x now, this is equal to y and uh, z is equal to z. Now, this does not mean anything because it is a 0 there. Okay? So, now I have uh, two equations, this equation and this equation and I can try to solve. So, let me write it down here and uh, uh, try to solve. So, the first equation is x is equal to uh, L 1 cos 1 plus L 2 cos 1 2. The second equation y is equal to L 1 sin 1 plus L 2 sin 1 2. Okay. Now, uh, 
these are two equations, so equation 1 and equation 2 and there are two unknowns. What are the unknowns? Uh, L1, L2 are known, L1, L2 are link lengths, they are known, okay, link lengths. Now, what is unknown is theta 1 and theta 2, these are the link angles, right. So, how do we uh, try, try to solve this? We note that there is a cos 1 here and a sin 1 here. So, if I square and add, there is a chance that a cos squared plus sin squared will become equal to 1. So, what we do here is we square, uh, we square equations uh, 1 and 2 and add, 1 and 2 and add. So, I am going to square this equation, square this equation and then add. So, what do we get? On our left hand side, you are going to get x squared plus y squared and on the right hand side, we are going to get L1 squared plus cos 1 squared plus L2 squared plus cos 1 2 squared plus twice L1 L2 uh, cos 1 cos 1 2. Uh, that is uh, this part plus we are going to get L1 squared sin 1 squared plus L2 squared sin 1 2 squared plus twice L1 L2 uh, sin 1 sin 1 2. Now, we can see that we have, uh, we can collect the terms. So, uh, this is a, so this term is telling us that this is L1 cos 1 squared, this is L1 squared sin 1 squared, okay. Similarly, this term is, uh, this term is sin 1 2 squared and this is cos 1 2 squared, okay. So, if I take them common, then what I can do is I can combine cos squared plus sin squared and make it 1 and again sin squared plus cos squared make it 1. So, basically what we are doing here is uh, we are collecting these terms and saying x squared plus y squared is equal to L1 squared. So, this is cos 1 squared plus sin 1 squared plus uh, L2 squared, it is uh, sin 1 2 squared plus cos 1 2 squared plus I take this common twice L1 L2 here, twice L1 L2, well, let me write it in the next line. So, this is going to become uh, plus twice L1 L2 and uh, what we have in the bracket is cos 1 cos 1 2 plus sin 1 sin 1 2 okay now we know that this is equal to 1 so uh, this term this term is going to become equal to 1 this term is going to become equal to 1 and we can simplify this term right so uh, let us do that and see that what it comes out as so it becomes x squared plus y squared is equal to l1 squared plus twice L2 squared plus cos, I am writing it in, for, in full, theta 1 plus theta 2 minus theta 1, that is the order in which it comes, okay. So, now you can see that this cancels, this cancels and that cancels. So, what we get is x squared plus y squared is equal to L1 squared plus L2 squared plus uh, cos 2, right. Now, something important here is uh, uh, so, from here I can bring it to the form, uh, sorry, there will be some terms here. Uh, so, there is, I messed up this twice L1 L2, twice L1 L2, okay. So, there is going to be twice L1 L2 into cos 2, right. So, uh, uh, now what we can do here is we can bring cos 2 on one side. So, we end up with cos 2 equal to x squared plus y squared minus L1 squared minus L2 squared divided by uh, twice L1 L2, okay. Now, something to note here is that uh, it would be, uh, uh, we would be inclined to take the cos inverse to get uh, theta 2 here and that is something we should not do. Now, why we should not do that is essentially because cos and sin always has two values. So, cos and sin, they have two values always. What do I mean is uh, uh, say sin 0 and uh, sin of 180 will have the same value, okay. So, cos of uh, so uh, 30 and cos of minus 30 will have the same value. So, cos and sin uh, normally have the same values. So, essentially uh, what I mean is uh, you will end up with two solutions. So, what does that mean? That means that if you have a manipulator like this, okay this is my manipulator. This is for one x y, this is one solution. What is the other solution? The other solution is exactly the linkage system like this will give you the same solution, okay. So, it is giving the same x y, but you can see that the theta 1, theta 2 are different. So, what I mean is for example, if this is one solution 1, 
and this is my solution 2. Then solution 1 would probably mean values of theta 1 and theta 2. Uh, just for example, if I say then if theta 1 is 60 degrees and this is 30 degrees just for example. Okay. What is my solution 2? Solution 2 is theta 1 is probably 60 degrees and what is uh, what is uh, theta 2? Theta 2 is minus 30 degrees. So, this is minus 30 degrees. Right. So, we have two solutions and both the solutions are uh, different. So, what you find here is, so this will not be 60, this will be, this is much larger, this is about uh, let us say it is 80 just for example. Okay. So, what we see is that this is a pair of solutions. Okay. So, if this is 60, this is my 60, that is my 30. Okay. The next set of solution is this is my 80, so this is 80 and that is minus 80, so it is coming in this direction, so it is minus. Now, what this shows is that both the configurations of this manipulator gives the same x y. Now, if I were to take this solution and this solution, okay, for theta 1 I take 60 and for theta 2 I take minus 30, what will happen is for one of this I get this solution, for that I get this solution. Right. So, what, what is happening here is uh, I am having a linkage system here, one link here, one link here and there is no connection here. Now, why did this happen? Essentially because I took 60 here and I took minus 30 there and uh, I am correlating these two and actually this is not connecting here. Okay. Now, this happens essentially because cos and sin uh, have uh, solutions in pairs and we should be careful not to take inverses at this stage. So, what this means is if we have this equation cos 2, what uh, equation we just had. So, let me write this equation again. So, cos 2 is equal to x squared plus y squared uh, minus L 1 squared minus L 2 squared divided by twice L 1 L 2. So, what we should do here is from here we use sin, we convert this to sin, so we get minus sin 2 squared and then we take, uh, we use for theta 2, we use a special function which is called a tan 2. Okay. So, a tan 2 sin 2 cos 2. So, this a tan 2 is a special function which basically takes the positive values of sin and cos. Okay. So, we have functions called a tan which is tan inverse and we have a tan 2. Okay. So, in a tan 2 the speciality is it takes only the positive values. Okay. So, uh, it takes the positive value of sin and it takes the positive value of cos. So, this uh, negative of cos is not going to happen. Now, if, the, if this does not happen then what you will get is this solution only. right? And that is what makes it important that uh, we do not take a solution, uh, we do not take the cos inverse here, but convert to sin and then from sin we come to uh, use the special function a tan 2. Okay. Next we need to find uh, the solution for theta 1 and which we can find uh, geometrically or by using algebraic uh, substitution. So, this was my, uh, let me draw it a little bigger, so it becomes clearer. So, this was my, this is my x axis, that is my y axis this was the manipulator linkage. Okay. Now, uh, we are given this coordinates x and y, okay. this is my angle theta 1, this is my angle theta 2. We have found, what have we done? We have found theta 2. Okay. We are looking for theta 1 now. Okay. Now, in terms of geometry, if you make this uh, construction, so let me make this construction here. So, this is one triangle this is another one okay, and this is coming down. Okay. So, now if I say this is my angle alpha, okay, this is my angle alpha, okay. then what we can do is I need to find what is, uh, uh, I need to find what is my angle uh, theta 1. Okay. How can I find that? So, this angle alpha is equal to, uh, sorry theta 1 is equal to, if this is angle is alpha and let me call this angle beta. Okay. So, now theta 1 is equal to this angle alpha minus the angle beta, right? so which is given here. So, this is my angle alpha and this my angle, this small angle is beta. Now, I know the tan of alpha, tan of alpha is this tan of this is equal to y, which is the coordinate y coordinate here divided by x. So, this is given by y by x right? that I know. Again, I know the tan of beta tan of beta. So, what is beta? Beta is this angle. So, we can look at this triangle now. So, if you look at this triangle, what is tan of beta is this distance by this total distance. So, this is equal to this fellow is equal, this is L 2, this is L 1. So, this is, so this distance is equal to uh, L 2 sin theta. 
So, this is equal to L 2 sin theta 2 right. So, this distance is equal to L 2 sin theta 2 and this base distance is equal to L 1 plus uh, L, L 2 uh, cos theta 2 right. So, now we have found what is cos alpha and what is cos uh, beta and we know from this triangle that tan of tan of alpha minus beta. So, tan of alpha minus beta is equal to theta 1 is equal to tan of theta 1 uh, which is equal to in this formula which is uh, uh, tan, tan alpha minus tan beta divided by 1 plus tan alpha tan beta. Okay. So, we uh, from here we can put the values of uh, the values of tan alpha and tan beta and then we can compute what is tan theta 1. And if you find uh, tan theta 1 what it comes out to be is tan theta. So, I know what is uh, tan alpha which is here and tan beta which is here. So, if I put these values in here then what we do get is tan of theta 1 is equal to uh, sin of L 1 plus L 2 uh, cos, cos 2 minus x of L 2 sin 2 divided by x of L 1 L 1 plus L 2 cos 2 plus y L 2 sin 2 ok. So, this is uh, this will give us the value of uh, theta 1. So, from here we can find what is uh, theta 1 ok. So, this is uh, basically giving us the uh, forward kinematics and the inverse kinematic solutions. So, the forward kinematics essentially is uh, this uh, two equations which means if I give the values of theta 1 and theta 2 here and here I am going to get the values of x and y. Inverse kinematics means that I am going to give the as input I am going to give the values of uh, the end effector uh, x and y coordinates of the end effector and I have to find what is theta 1 and theta 2 ok. And this is the procedure for a general manipulator uh, uh, kinematics. Now, uh, this was a very simple case uh, what we have to remember here is uh, that uh, for a two, de uh, 2 degree of freedom manipulator like the one shown here uh, it is a very very uh, simple case because uh, uh, there are only 2 variables and it is a planar system. But if you go to a slightly higher degree of freedom system say for example, if you go to 6 degrees of freedom then uh, it may not be very easy to solve and in many cases solutions do not exist. So, it is not that a solution can be found always ok. Now, when we talk of solutions uh, this is something important which we need to uh, discuss here when we talked about a solution. So, when when I talked about uh, solving this set of equations and we, dis we use the word solution. So, it basically means uh, uh, closed form solutions, uh, closed form solutions which means that the you can get all the solutions, uh, we can get all the uh, all the solutions using algebraic or geometric methods. So, this is the meaning of uh, a closed form solution. So, when I said solution I basically mean a closed form solution and the other solution is what we mean by numerical solutions. Uh, numerical solutions like approximate solutions are approximate uh, solutions and these are not used in robotics because uh, we would like to get uh, exact solutions. Now, why these are not used essentially is if you do not have if you have approximate solutions there is always some error ok. So, if I am using a numerical solution I will get some error and this error if I multiply it with large number of cycles say if I multiply with a robot will work for very large cycles. So, if it is like 10 raised to uh, 10 cycles right the robot is working. So, you can see that the error is going to become a very large error at the end of the day ok. So, numerical solutions are not exact solutions and this is one of the reasons why numerical solutions are not preferred and not normally used. So, when I say solution here I basically mean closed form solution and what is a closed form solution? A case where we can get all the solutions using algebraic or geometric methods and the method I showed is essentially a, a method for getting uh, using algebraic method and uh, geometric method. Now, uh, the procedure for getting solutions we have uh, so solution procedure is exactly the same ok. Uh, for any manipulator number 1 write your dh parameter table 
number 2 find the matrix from 0 to n to the n defector then equate the matrix 0 to n matrix to the matrix of desired uh, desired position and orientation uh, equate both of them and then try and solve so this is 3 that is 4 then try to solve term by term by equating uh, so what i mean here is equate term by term and form equations and try to solve so if you are lucky we will be able to solve if you are not lucky we will not be able to solve now let us look at uh, moving forward let us look at a uh, little bit more uh, complicated system uh, that of the puma manipulator uh, so the puma manipulator essentially has 6 degrees of freedom so this is a 6 dof arm and uh, the puma the name essentially it was made somewhere around 1960s uh, by the company Unimation and uh, it basically the name means primary universal machine for assembly. Okay. So, uh, this is where the name Puma comes from and it is a very old robot one of the first robots which are made and the structure of the robot is uh, very similar to the human arm. So, this is the Puma robot which we will look at during the when we have the experiments in the lab then we will be learning how to program this robot and using VAL2 and we will also be uh, uh, seeing the forward kinematics inverse kinematics of this arm and learn how to use it. So, now uh, looking at the, uh, the inverse kinematics the first thing that we need to do is to make the dh parameter table. So, assign the axis and make the dh parameter table. So, let us uh, start assigning the axis let us first understand how this moves uh, if you can uh, visualize this uh, if you can visualize this uh, robot. So, this is the base of the robot this is the base this uh, joint is called the shoulder or the uh, sorry the first joint is called the waist. Okay. So, this is the waist about which it can rotate. So, it can rotate about this axis then this is the shoulder axis. So, this is my shoulder axis. So, it can rotate about the shoulder axis here like this. This is the elbow axis which is similar to our hand which can rotate like this and the three axis at the wrist the roll pitch and the yo axis. So, if you look at our uh, hand structure. So, if you look at our uh, uh, hand structure then essentially we have one axis here. So, this is uh, this axis is called the waist axis okay, which uh, in the puma robot is what I just showed. So, it my hand can rotate about this axis. So, this is called the waist because it is uh, about uh, vertical axis about the waist. The second axis is the shoulder axis. So, if I see my hand like this. So, the axis is like this and the arm can go up and down. Okay. So, if you can uh, see the axis here it is perpendicular pointing outward. So, it can go up and down like this. The third axis is the elbow axis which is here again. So, the elbow arm can move up and down like this. Okay. The, uh, so, this is the third axis. The fourth axis is here which is called the roll axis. So, it can rotate about this axis which is here. So, the roll axis is here. This is my pitch axis this is the, uh, the fifth axis and this is the sixth axis which is the yaw axis. So, if you note carefully this has 6 degrees of freedom the first axis is here which is called my uh, the waist axis. Second is my uh, shoulder axis third is my elbow axis uh, the fourth axis is the roll axis which is in the wrist. Uh, this is my pitch axis and this is my uh, yaw axis. So, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and uh, please note that the last 3 axes are intersecting at this point. Something to point out here is that in the human uh, in the human hand this 3 axes are not intersecting and that is very very important because if the axes do not intersect we will see that you cannot solve the system of equations. And uh, in the human hand uh, our axis is first, second, third and fourth are somehow combined here. So, this is my third and the role also takes place here only. So, uh, the, the third axis and the fourth axis are here, fifth, sixth are here. Okay. So, in the human body we have, uh, we have actually seven. So, there is three axis here. So, we have one axis, uh, this is my first axis, second axis, third axis. So, three degrees of freedom here, two here, w one is like this, the other is like this. So, three to five and then I have a pitch and I have a yaw which is another two. So, it is a total of seven. Whereas, in the Puma robot we have six and uh, this is the structure. So, uh, let us uh, so let us uh, just very quickly assign the frames. So, when we are assigning the frames uh, let us uh, start off assigning with the axis of rotation. So, this is my z 0 it is rotating about this axis. 
So, it can rotate like this about this axis. So, that is my z 0 and z 1. So, z 0 and z 1 axis is there right. Then uh, it can rotate about this axis which is called the shoulder axis. So, it can rotate like this ok. So, this is my uh, z 2 axis ok which is shown here. Then this is my z 3 axis which is the elbow axis. So, this is z 3. So, it can rotate about here. Now, z 4, z 5, z 6 are shown here in this figure at the bottom. So, this is my uh, z 4 axis which is the roll axis which is like this. So, this uh, so this part is shown here uh, for clarity ok. So, this is my z 4 axis is like this. Now, z 5 axis is uh, my z 5 is that side that side ok. So, that is my z 5 ok and z 6 is back here again this is my z 6 axis. So, z 4 and z 6 essentially look like they are the same axis, but they are actually not ok. So, to explain this uh, when we go to the lab and do the experiment then we will be explaining the uh, setup of the uh, Puma robot and uh, why the the Z4 Z uh, Z4 and Z6 are in the same direction ok. So, this is something important to note that why these two axes are in the same direction. Now, let us uh, write down our axis system. So, this is my Z0 Z1. Now, we uh, we have assigned our Z's. So, Z0 Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4, Z5 and uh, Z6. Now, we are going to assign our x axis. So, my x, uh, x 0, x 1 and x 2 are uh, the axis in this direction. x 3 is like this. So, this is my x 3 ok. Now, x 4 is, uh, is like this. So, if you look at x 4, it is uh, like this x 4 is in that direction ok. x 4 is in that direction. Now, uh, what about x 5? x 5 is upward because z 5 is this side. So, x 5 is also upward and x 6 is also here. So, something to note here that x 0, x 1, x 2 are the same axis at the same origin and similarly uh, x 4, x 5, x 6 are in the same direction the origin is the same ok. So, uh, today we will uh, end with assignment of axis for the Puma robot and in the next class we will be looking at the dh parameter table for the Puma robot and then uh, see how we can do the inverse kinematics of a real robot 6 degree of freedom which is the uh, Puma robot. So, we end today here ok. Thank you.